Hey everyone, I hope all of you are doing great. So in this lesson, we are going to learn about Ansible. If you go to the Ansible documentation, you will learn that Ansible is an IT automation tool and it, it is used to configure system. It is used for automation and especially in DevOps, it is used a lot. So now let's understand some of the basic features of uh, Ansible. So Ansible is an IT automation tool. You can literally automate anything. You just need to understand what are the modules you need to use, the plugins, and in fact, you can uh, create your own custom plugins uh, or modules if you want to achieve something which is uh, already not available in Ansible. Now, other than that, you can also use Ansible to configure system, configure operating systems, application databases, network devices, uh, firewalls. There are a lot many things you can do. If I start to uh, name all of them, it is going to be a very, very long video. Ansible is used a lot to deploy software. You can deploy any kind of packages. You can uh, manage softwares. You can uh, configure, the, uh, configure the softwares. You can set the uh, default settings and so many things. And with the help of uh, Ansible, you can also orchestrate advanced IT tasks. Like you can create a flow which has uh, let's say 10 tasks to be executed in a sequence or based on some sort of condition. So you can do those kind of things using Ansible as well. Now there are two types of Ansible additions available. Uh, first one is open source and the other one is enterprise. The open source one is fully free to use. Uh, it is open source code is also available. If you want to customize the code or you want to enhance it, you can do that as well. You are free to do that. And open source is basically managed by communities, uh, community driven. There is a wide adoption of Ansible open source platform, which you can already see. Uh, even if you go to trends.google.com, you can see the adoption uh, trend is increasing. Okay, Ansible uh, provides you flexibility to use it being an open source uh, features like no vendor lock-in, uh, agentless. So this is again, agentless is one of the key features of Ansible. So you have to install Ansible uh, on a single server, which is going to be called a managed node. And then it, it can literally interact to all the servers which is available in your enterprise without the need of installing any software on those target machines. Uh, typically you see when there is some automation tool is available it typically works on the uh, agent mode so you have to install some sort of agents on the target machines as well which you want to manage but that is not the case in ansible uh, other than this there is a, another feature which is called item portents okay this is one of the best feature of ansible so what it means is um, if you run the same playbook again and again it is not going to basically break the system uh, for example let's say i'm going to create a user which is let's say called uh, ansible user on all the 10000 machines okay and i created a playbook to run that uh, to to run the command to basically create users i run it once so the first time it is going to create users on all the 10000 servers and if i run it again basically it is going to see that the user is already available so it is not going to uh, it is not going to create the user again okay so it is not going to mess up your environment so that is one of the best feature of ansible and other than that, the security and transparency, uh, since it is an open source code is available, uh, it means you have access to seeing everything. The code is quite transparent. Okay, if you want to scan it with your security software, you can do those as well. And obviously, as I told you, it is being used a lot in integrating with DevOps pipelines. Now, Enterprise Edition uh, has lot many support, especially uh, it is managed by Red Hat. Red Hat provides uh, enterprise support as well. So that's one of the cool things, especially if you are one of those enterprise uh, who doesn't an open source uh, until there is someone who is going to support that open source. And uh, uh, what Ansible uh, Enterprise Edition does is there is going to be a lot of content which is going to be certified by them. Okay, because Ansible being an open source, there's a lot of people always contributing uh, towards creating module uh, uh, plugins and a lot many uh, playbooks are also available on GitHub. So uh, how do you know which one is good, which one is bad? So uh, Red Hat does uh, that kind of work. It certifies some content and uh, certified content is, uh, you can see there on the Red Hat website, you can download it and you, you are ensured that yeah, these contents are good to use, okay? Other than this, uh, Enterprise Edition also provides you features such as role-based access control. So you have like a graphical user interface uh, to access, uh, access Sensible. And then you can control which user is going to be able to have which kind of role. So that is something which is called role-based access control. 
So some of them is going to have let's say view control or run only control. Some of them going to have development or developer level of uh, access control or admin level of access control. So that is something available as well. And it has good integration with Red Hat products. Uh, you can also see a lot of automation analytics. Uh, in fact, the G GUI itself provides a lot of feature. Uh, security and compliance is improved in Enterprise Edition. It has Automation Hub, which is basically a UI edition of uh, Ansible, uh, creating or managing Ansible playbooks. And with the help of this, you can also integrate with the external systems. Uh, especially in Ansible Enterprise Edition, you are going to have lots of uh, REST APIs uh, exposed. So you can use those REST API to uh, interact, with, interact with Ansible using some other third-party application tools. You can integrate it uh, literally with any other thing. Okay. Uh, there is something called Red Hat Insights, uh, where you see insights about how the uh, how the product is working, the resource consumption, and so on. Uh, again, we are going to see uh, some of the feature of enterprise. Probably, I will show you when we are going to use it. Uh, for now, you just need to understand that these are the features which is available in open source and enterprise. Okay, so let's move on and understand Ansible architecture. The Ansible component is going to run on a server and that server is typically either called control node or management node. Okay, and then uh, you create a playbook and you also create an inventory. Okay, so playbook contains a task to be run and you in playbook you also tell where to run these tasks. Okay, and then uh, the system information for example, uh, server information, how to connect to that, those information you provide typically in an in inventory file. Okay, so Ansible uh, Managed Node kind of uses playbooks and inventory, plugs them, and then runs the command on the target servers. Okay, again, there are different mechanism it is going to use or protocol it is going to use to connect to the system. For example, to connect to Linux system or Unix based system, it is going to use SSH and to interact with Windows machines, it's going to use WinRM. Now let's talk about inventory file. So here you can see creating an inventory file is very easy. It's just a text based file and uh, under the square bracket, you can define or you can just give it a logical name. For example, in this case, we are calling it DB servers and these are the three servers which is under DB uh, servers. And then I am giving it another name, which is web server. Under web server, we are just giving the host names. You saw here we gave the IP addresses. Here we gave the host name, so you can mix and match. And uh, again, there is another uh, tag which is called Windows servers. Okay, so here we have given Windows 01, Windows 02. These are the servers. Now, what you can additionally do is you can also provide the credentials or username or uh, additional parameters, basically, which is going to control that how how the connection is going to be established on these servers. So, for example, here you can see. We are specifying that on this server it should be connecting uh, with the root user and the password is also root. Now for server uh, 192.168.0.2, the username is Oracle and the password is Aura123. Okay, so this is how you can specify credentials as well. Now we are going to again go through uh, little in little detail when we are creating our own inventory files. Now let's understand what is playbook. Okay, so now here you can see this is a simple playbook which is uh, which I have just taken for sample. Now let's understand this uh, playbook. So a playbook is basically going to be ending with YML extension. Okay, it is a file where you basically uh, provide why uh, you you write it in YML and it always starts with uh, three uh, hyphens. Okay, so by this it means it is a valid YML file okay so now the first section which we have is name under name basically we are giving a name to this play okay so whatever uh, the first hyphen name which you see under this whatever comes is basically going to be called a play okay so under play you can have multiple tasks now let's see what is the second line so basically the second line which you see here is host so as you saw in the inventory file we had mentioned web uh, underscore server so basically it is going to run on only the servers which is which was specified under web underscore servers group third thing which you see here is gather facts so whenever ansible connects to the target nodes it gathers some system information about those target nodes now by default it is already enabled again it is one of the tasks which is going to get executed if you want to disable it you can disable it by but by default it is already enabled if you want to be explicit you can write gather facts yes otherwise anyway it's going to run now other than this you can see we have declared variables which is web server port 80 so this is how you declare a variable and this variable can be used in tasks 
okay so that's about gather facts let's move to variable section variable section i told you so you can basically you don't want to uh, type uh, port 18 in, in under all of your tasks so you just create a variable and then you can just uh, use this variable name in in the task for example here you can see web server port we have used web server port variable here okay and in future if you want to change the port from 80 to any other port you just need to change the value here and rerun the playbook now let's talk about task section so this is a section under which you define multiple tasks or a single task again depending on uh, on the need so here you can see we have created a simple task which uh, which is uh, which is having a name you can give any name so the name is ensuring apache is installed so again you you should be making sure that you give a name which is descriptive enough and which defines the tasks okay the playbook is written in a way which is more like a documentation itself so uh, somebody who's going to read this uh, yaml playbook they should be able to understand and this should also act as a documentation for any developer now under this let's understand under the under task we have name section then we have become uh, section which is uh, which is says become yes so basically we want elevation to root user that's why we are setting become to yes and under that we are using apt module okay so ansible has lot many modules you can use different modules for different purposes for example if you want to create user you are going to uh, you are going to use some module of ansible if you want to let's say uh, create or or basically if you want to install or manage packages you are going to use package modules so there are a lot many modules available and all of these information is available in the documentation so we i'll show you again all of those information this is just a quick introduction about ansible playbook okay so here you can see we have defined the task and we have also defined a condition that uh, basically if ansible os family is equal to debian then only uh, this task should run and once the task is completed it should notify it should basically notify to restart apache now what is restart apache restart apache is one of the handler okay so let's say once the httpd services are installed or web server installed we also want to restart or basically we want to start uh, apache services okay so that's why we are saying okay once this task is finished notify to this handler and then once this task is finished the task which is mentioned under handlers are going to get executed so that is how you know this is a little complex uh, little complex playbook but i wanted to just give you an idea of how the playbooks are going to be uh, looking like now in, in order to install ansible the process is quite simple you can just use package manager in this case i'm using yum so we can just say sudo yum install ansible and after that you can write ansible space hyphen hyphen version which is going to tell you about the version information of ansible which is installed on your system now here you can see i have already installed ansible so that's why if i run sudo yum install ansible it says uh, everything is already installed nothing more to do and if i do ansible hyphen hyphen version you can see the ansible version which we are running is ansible 2.9.27 okay now uh, let's create our first ansible playbook now before we start creating our first ansible playbook let's understand the uh, my demo environment so you have you know full understanding of uh, what is our lab environment is looking like so you can probably also replicate the same now this is the this is the this is my workstation the ip address of which is 192.168.43.192 okay now on my workstation i'm running with windows operating system and other than this i have three servers the first server where i have installed ansible and which is going to be basically called ansible management node in our case the ip address for those are 192.168.43.19 okay and this is the server where we are basically going to create our playbooks and inventories and then i have two more servers one server is 192.168.43.20 and this is again CentOS server. Then there is another server which is 192.168.43.21. This is again one of the CentOS server. Okay. And then what we are going to do is we are also going to interact with Windows server. Now I do not have any additional Windows server. So what I'm going to do is with the help of Ansible, I'm going to basically connect back to this uh, my workstation. Okay. So that's why if you see this is the same IP address which I have specified here. Now again, as I told you to connect to different type of operating systems, it uses different mechanism to connect to uh, CentOS, which is basically Unix based system. We are going to be using SSH to connect to Windows. We are going to be using WinRM. So that's all. Let's uh, do some hands on.